What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Computer Science Education Channel. My name is Sam and today we're going to be doing another leak code problem. And the problem that we're going to be doing today is called add two numbers. Um, this is actually a question that I've personally seen in a phone interview before. Um, it was with uh, VMware a couple years ago. Um, so yeah, just like the last video, I'm going to go through the steps that I go through whenever I get an interview question and go through my thought process. Um, so as we can see here, the companies that have asked this have been uh, Amazon, Google, and Adobe. Um, let's go ahead and add mine. So we had VMware. And I saw it more than six months ago in a phone interview. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the first step that I like to go through is to actually really understand the problem and understand kind of what it's asking and, and what the output should be. So the question is, you're given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. So these are list node L1 and list node L2. The digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contains a single digit. Add the two numbers and return it as a linked list. You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zeros except the number zero itself. Okay, so we know that the values passed in will always have at least one list node. Um, so if we look at the example here, we have two, uh, two I guess, numbers represented by linked lists. Uh, the first one, since it's, reverse, since it's um, ordered in reverse, this is actually going to be 342 plus 465 and the output here would be 807. So we see at yeah, 342 plus 465 equals 807. Okay, so I feel like, you know, we have a good understanding of the problem here. Um, it looks like the output is going to actually be um, a new list. So we're going to be returning a list node. So it would be like the head that points to the list. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next step. Uh, the next step is to actually diagram the problem and kind of solve it without thinking in terms of code, but just kind of like how you, how you would solve it. Um, so let's go ahead and copy the input. So let me comment this part out. Okay, so, so let's think in terms of, you know, how would we just solve this problem if we were using regular math? Um, so we have 342 and then we have 465. So if we're adding these up, we just start at the end, right? So we go 5 plus 2, that's going to be a 7. Then we go to 4 plus 6, which is 10. So it's going to be 0. And then we're going to go ahead and carry the 1. And then finally we get 4 plus 3 plus 1, which is 8. So 807, and that's the answer, right? So why don't we just do this with the with the list since it's giving it it's just given to us in reverse order um, we can just have pointers pointing at the beginning of the list add those up put it into our new list and then move our pointers until we get to the end um, so let's go over an example here so let's see so at first we're going to have um, pointer here and a pointer not there but here um, and then we'll have like a, a new list here so we're going to do 5 plus 2 which is going to be 7 uh, that's going to be our first node then we're going to move the uh, move the pointers over so we get to 4 and we get to a 6 and then that's going to be 6 plus 4 but since it's 10 we're gonna just gonna put a zero there, right? So we'll have zero, and then uh, we're gonna need to have some kind of flag that, that, like a Boolean that says whether we have a carry or we don't have a carry. And if we do have a carry, then we'll add an additional one. So right now we go to the next node. So, okay, so now we get to 4 plus 3, and then we know that we also have that carry. So it's going to be 7 plus 1, so we get to 8. And then finally, we're just going to return this list, and that should be our answer. Um, a couple issues here that we could run into is 
um, what if the nodes or what if the lists are un, are uneven length? So say this one has an additional node here and say it's like a five. Um, well then once we move our pointers, this is gonna be pointing to a null. So once we move these, this is gonna be pointing to null and this is gonna be pointing to a five. Oops. So I think this should be pretty easy to handle. We can just check if it's a null, then we won't add it to our value. Um, and then we'll just add the five and then this will be an additional five here, right? So that should be pretty easy to handle. Uh, another case that we can run into is um, what if the last value has a carry? So let's go back here and say we have a three and say our last value here is like a, an eight. Um, well, once we add these up, we'll have, let's see, what, we, what would we have? So we have zero, we have a 12 here, right? So we'd want to add a two, but then once we you know, get to the end, we would actually exit like a loop that we would have, and we still would have that additional carry. So we need to just do a check at the end, and if the carry is true, then we'll just add a one at the end. Um, cool, so I think we have a good idea of what we're gonna do. Uh, let's go to the next step, which is actually writing like a high-level algorithm of what we're gonna do. So let's see, so first step is we're gonna have, um, let's see, set two pointers, one for each input list. Uh, and then we also need um, like the new list that we're gonna return. So create a head of new list. Cool, so the second step that we're gonna do is we're going to, right, we're gonna be adding up the values that our pointers are at. So adding values that our pointers are at. And then we also need to check if there's a carry. And if there is, uh, add one. Then finally, what we need to do is we can need to see if we're value, like the sum that we have is greater than, uh, greater than or equal to 10. Um, and if it is, then we need to take the mod of that and just return like the, the ones digit. So check if sum is greater than or equal to 10. If it is, mod it and sets, uh, we'll have like a carry flag equal to true. Cool, so once we do that, um, I guess we could say, uh, you know, iterate or move pointers forward. Um, and then finally at the end, uh, say after loop, then we need to um, check if flat, check if uh, carry is true. Uh, if it is, add uh, additional node to, we'll just call it the result list. Um, and then finally, we're gonna return the result list. Okay, cool. So at this point, we've diagrammed our problem. We have the kind of the high level steps that we need to do. At this point, I would ask the interviewer, you know, is it, how does, does it look good? Is it cool if I go ahead and code this up? Um, so the next step would be to actually write the code for this. Um, so for this, it should be pretty straightforward since you already have the algorithm that you need. Um, so what we need here are a few things. We need our, um, we'll say our result list. We're gonna need two pointers that point to each list input list. So we'll do list P1 equals, we'll call it L1, list node P2 equals P2. Um, and we also need to have a pointer that points to our result list because we wanna return the head of it, but then we also, as we're adding nodes to it or we're appending to it, we need to move that pointer over. Um, so why don't we call this um, kind of result head and then we can have this one called um, like result iterator and we can set that equal to result head. Okay, so the next step would be to uh, go through our lists. So we'll say while P1 does not equal null, 
or P2 does not equal null. Um, so a few things could happen at this step. We could have one of them be null, like we could have P1 be null and P2 not be. We can have the vice versa, or we can have both of them not be null. Um, so let's do the case where if P1 equals null, then what we want to do is we want to, um, so first let's create a variable here called sum, and let's set that equal to zero. So if P1 equals null, we need to add the value of P2 to sum. So we'll do p2.val, um, and I think that's all we need to do for that step. And then we'll also have the case where p2 equals null. Um, then we'll do sum plus equals p1.val. And um, one thing that we forgot to do is also move our pointers forward after we add it. So we'll do p2 equals p2.next. And then we'll do p1 equals p1.next. And then the final case that we have is when both of them are still pointing to a value. So we'll just do sum plus equals p1.val uh, plus p2.val. And then in this case, we want to actually move both of the pointers forward. p2.next. Okay, cool. So now we've added the two values that our pointers are pointing to. Uh, we need to do a couple more things, right? We need to first check if there's a carry. So if sum is greater than or equal to 10, then we need to actually have a flag here. So let's go ahead and create a Boolean flag called carry. And initially we'll set that to false. So if our sum is greater than or equal to 10, then what we need to do is we need to set sum mod equals 10. And then we also need to set our carry flag equal to true. Otherwise, we'll set our carry equal to false. Okay, so at this point, let's see if we did this right. So our, if our sum is greater than 10, then we mod it and we set our carry equal to true. So I think what we should do here before we do that is actually, we need to check if there's a carry first. So if carry, then we'll do sum plus plus, right? Because we need to check from the previous value if there was a carry, then we need to add that to it. So we need to do that first, and then we'll check if our sum is greater than 10. And if it is, then we'll set our carry to true for the next iteration. Okay, so now that we have our value here, we need to create a new list node. We'll call it new load, new node equals new list node. And we're gonna set that to the value of sum. And then what we need to do is we need to set list node. Let's see. We actually, let's, we need to have this result iterator here. And we need to set the next value of that equal to our new node. And then we need to set result iterator equals result iterator dot next. So an issue that I, that I can see here is initially when we create this result iterator, it's not going to have any, it's not going to be pointing to anything. It's going to be pointing to null. So when we try to reference it here, uh, it's going to give us a null pointer exception because there is no next. So one thing we can do here to kind of um, get around that is a little trick that I know is we can actually set this result head equal to, to like a dummy, a dummy node. So what we can do here is we can set it to a node and the value in here doesn't really matter. So we can just set this equal to zero. And then when we return our result head, we just return the next value after zero. Um, so that should solve that. So let's go down here. So we move the pointers forward. Uh, after the loop, check if carry is true. So if carry, then what we want to do is we want to add that additional node. So we'll do result iterator dot next equals new node equals new list node here with one. And I think we have an error. Actually, never mind. That looks right. Um, cool. So at this point, all we need to do is we need to return result head dot 
next. So let's go ahead and run that. And we have an error here. So line 27, if P2 equals, so this needs to be else if, right? And list node P2, variable P2 might not have been initialized. So this should actually be L2. Cool, so it looks like it worked. Um, it accepted it with a runtime of 87% and a memory usage of 88%. So it looks pretty good. Um, now let's go over what the time complexity is of this. So, so we do have to go over every node in L1 and every node in L2. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n. Actually, it should be n, sorry, m plus n, where m is the size of L1 and n is the size of, um, n is the size of L2. Um, so yeah, so that, that concludes the problem there. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Um, please like and subscribe. It really supports my channel. And um, see you guys in the next video.